Um, yeah, welcome to this talk about uh, Leap 42.2 roadmap and development process. I'm Ludwig Nussel. I'm with Suse since uh, forever. <laughs> I joined uh, 15 years ago, and the Yast team actually went to security and came via the OpenSUSE team to Leap. So I started as a release manager for OpenSUSE Leap in March. And now I have the pleasure to deliver the new 42.2. So what is, what is Leap actually? In contrast to Tumbleweed, which is our rolling release with all the latest and greatest, Leap is meant to be a stable release. So it, it's meant to not always contain the latest and greatest, but if in doubt, the packages that are proven to work in practice. The release schedule for Leap is a new version every year, a minor version every year, and hopefully we can reach the goal of having painless updates between those minor releases. This uh, development model gives us a maintenance period of three years, counted from the first Leap release. So as we could see in Alberto's talk before, we have very conservative users mostly, so they, they install and then stay with us for quite a while. There will be an overlap of six months when a new Leap comes out until the maintenance of the previous release stops. Compared to the previous OpenSUSE releases, they had a maintenance period of 18 months to two years roundabout, and only two months time to switch if you skip the release. And the special thing about Leap is that it has SLEA spaces, and um, basis means basically up to X, up to GNOME. That's what we take from SLEA. And all the rest, alternative desktops and additional applications that are not in the enterprise distribution, um, that's what we can take from Tumbleweed, if wanted. So to explain, to explain the difference, how the previous model looked like, the previous OpenSUSEs had a release um, every eight months or one year, and it always branched from factory I thought I corrected this slide. It should actually say factory because Tumbleweed was something different back then. So uh, basically factory was frozen at some point in time, branched, and that was released as OpenSUSE. And every once in a while, SUSE took that code base again and created a, a SLE release out of that. And like with SLE 11, the development was mostly independent of OpenSUSE releases. So what's the difference to now? Now with Leap, we have a shared code base that is the base system that is used in SLE and in Leap at the same time. And Leap adds packages from Tumbleweed on top. We are not strictly bound to only use SLE packages. We can also take packages from Tumbleweed. For example, if, we, if a feature is too late for, for a SLE service pack, we might decide to put it in Leap anyways, and, and in the hope that Leap picks it up for the next service pack. So there's a flow back into the shared code base. And that's what exactly what's happening with, with 42.2 right now. In 42.1, we had quite some packages updated to Tumbleweed versions. And now SP2 syncs up to, that, to those versions again. Um, yeah, some facts about 42.2, we base it on 42.1, which was Lee 12 SP1. And then we take updates from Lee 12 SP2. SP2 is actually a pretty big service pack. So I, I said Leap is going to be stable and not so many updates, but if Lee updates more, then we also update more. So SP2 is about 900 packages yesterday. I don't know how many it is today. Um, we get a new kernel, kernel 4.4, it's a LTS release from SP2. We get a new system D. Um, Frederick already explained the story behind GNOME, so we get a full GNOME desktop upgrade. We also get a Qt update, which is actually a good thing, because that new Qt enables us also to update KDE. And lots of other packages like Samba is also updated in SP2. 
And on top of that, we had components from Tumbleweed. So KDE is the, the most prominent example, probably, the, the second desktop. And the KDE team already indicated that they want to upgrade KDE in Foy 2 as well. And other packages, I mentioned Haskell here, just because last week it was rather annoying to upgrade 150 packages. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the scheduled release date is November the 2nd. So it's the same schedule like previous OpenSUSE releases had. Released in November, that, that turned out to be pretty good. The primary architecture will be x86-64. So no 32-bit again. Secondary architectures are ARC64 and PowerPC via the port subproject. Here's a more detailed schedule. So we already managed to release Alpha 1 and Alpha 2. Alpha 2 was yesterday. The next milestone is Alpha 3 in four weeks. Even though it's called Alpha, it's important to know that SLE ends its, its beta phase about in four weeks, so it gets harder to get fixes back into SLE. So our base system basically already freezes in four weeks. And then end of August, I want to have a beta one, then beta two in September, and October will be our release candidates with the release at the end. For those who may, may wonder, we have a gap between Goldmaster and the actual release date. So on the Goldmaster date, we produce the final ISO, and then we need a few days for the mirrors to fill up to publish it worldwide. And we also need to give the press a bit of a head start so they can prepare articles to get a bigger impact on the release day. So that is why it's important to stick to that and don't share the ISO before the actual release date. Helps us to have a bigger impact. Okay, let's get a bit more technical. If you want to submit packages for Leap, I want to check the status. The project you need to look at in OBS is OpenSUSE Leap 42.2. And for non-free packages, the non-free sub-project. That's where you have to submit packages. That's where you have to put your submit requests. As long as we're developing, so about until the RC phase. When we're done with developing Leap, maintenance starts, and then you have to submit to the update projects. But you will notice, because OSC at that point will reject your submissions to 42.2. So that's just for completeness. Yeah, one thing to explain when Talking about Leap is the, the rings and stagings. Packages every once in a while get approached by release engineers, telling them that some package failed in ring whatever or failed in staging whatever, and you wonder what that is about. So this model is copied from Tumbleweed, basically, the Tumbleweed development process, in order to guarantee a always working base system we separated the distribution in, in a core part we care about, so up to GNOME and KDE, basically. And that packages that, that are part of those rings are tested separately in a staging project. So, for example, if someone submits glibc, it would go to a staging project. The staging project recompiles all of the yeah, 2,000 packages runs OpenKA and checks if everything is fine before it gets into distribution. Um, so there are actually three rings. One is uh, the ring zero is the bootstrap ring. It's about 100 packages. From those 100 packages, it's possible to build the entire distribution. Ring one is everything up to the minimal X installation, basically, so ISWM and ring two adds GNOME and KDE. And that setup is mirrored in the, in the staging setup. So the staging A to E project right now for Leap contain the ring one packages and the DVD sub project contain the ring two package. So that's Wolfgang why Firefox is in the DVD sub project and you couldn't find it in, in A. Um, yeah, the non-ring packages go to, a, go to an interim staging project, staging ADI. The packages there are just rebuilt to check that the submission is complete. We don't run OpenKA on that. So 
we already learned that Leap consists of several upstream projects. So it has packages from SLES as well as from 42.1 and from Factory. The, um, it's important to know that packages from SLE and 42.1 are submitted by a bot, so you don't have to submit them yourself. You can, of course, if the bot is too slow, but in general, you don't need to. But packages that come from factory need to be submitted explicitly. The reason is we cannot know if a, well, we cannot automatically determine if a version in factory is safe to upgrade in Leap and whether you want that. So even if you sub submitted something like Haskell to for the 2 already, you need to submit it again if you want to upgrade it there. I often ask question is, how can I find out where my package comes from? Whether it comes from SLE or from OpenSUSE or where does it come from? So we have this special 00, zero meta package container that contains a YAML file that resembles a, a dictionary basically. So it just names the package and where it comes from. Pretty straightforward. Um, we can see here that bind, for example, is from SP1, GIMP is from factory, and the kernel is a, a copy in 42.2. Yeah, same with the other packages. So if you want to know where your package comes from or where the bot that submits the, the packages looks at, take a look at that file. If you don't like the presentation of the information, go ahead and write some nice web GUI <laughs> so everyone can benefit from that. Okay, here's a picture, the only one in this presentation that outlines the development process. It's basically the same as factory. So everything starts usually in devil projects. The package maintainer submits package sources towards 42.2. We never copy binaries for those from other distributions, always sources. At that point, um, we have several review bots, so automated tools that look at the submissions and review them. We have the staging manager who looks at those packages and as mentioned before, some of them are ring packages. They need to go to a special staging project. They're copied there, rebuilt. Then the, those staging projects produce ISO images. The ISO images go to OpenKA. OpenKA does some basic checks, not all of them, but some basic important tests. And if OpenKA says go, the staging manager or the release manager accepts the submission into 42.2. And there all the packages are also rebuilt again. After a while, depending how fast OBS is, we get an ISO and an FTP repo. That one again goes to OpenKA and OpenKA runs hundreds of tests on those. And if that one is also says okay, the release manager can go ahead and declare, for example, an alpha 2 like yesterday. If it's red, yeah, we would have to delay. And here's also the difference to Tumbleweed. OBS automatically publishes the 42, the two results to the download server without waiting for OpenKA. Only the snapshots that we release um, are influenced by the OpenKA result. But right now you won't notice because the, um, when you install the alpha 2, for example, it, it always gets to the alpha 2 repo and never to the untested one. Whether or not that is a good setup would be up for discussions. We could, in theory, do a similar model with like Tumbleweed and don't have hard milestones, but wait for the OpenKA results and update the, the alpha or beta repo every day. Would be a possible model, but right now it's the traditional one. So I mentioned uh, the tools. The first one is the update crawler. It's a Python script that looks into this lookup file and checks whether any of those mentioned projects have newer versions of a package and then submits them. Another tool we have is the Leaper bot. This bot verifies the origin of a package. So if the lookup file says the package is from 42.1, for example, and someone goes ahead and submits the factory package, the bot would 
ask for a manual review to say, okay, that is fine. Just to make sure people don't accidentally submit experimental sources there. It also has bits of the maintenance bot. So if the package maintainer himself doesn't submit the package, but someone else, the bot would notice and put the original package maintainer or double project as a reviewer. So that is active already, and some of you may have received the email. Sometimes it says review needed by devil languages Python. That's for you to take action. Go into OBS, please, and approve or decline the request. Otherwise, we cannot check in such packages. And finally, we have the Manager 42 script that every once in a while runs through all the 42.2 packages and updates the lookup file. So the other bots can work on that. All of the sources are in GitHub, so if you don't like how the bot behaves, feel free to send a pull request. Good. With all that, how can you contribute? We have several areas where we are looking for contributions. One of them, for example, is design. So we would like to have all our desktops branded in the same way, for example, have the wallpaper the same across distributions. And one thing that I would really like to see is have the same font on every desktop, because OpenK looks at screenshots. So for example, if you have Inkscape on GNOME and on XFCE, to human it looks the same, but for the machine it's different because the font is different for whatever reason. So if you have a clue about that kind of stuff, you're welcome to, to join. Also in the area of design is taking a look at our infrastructure. We have quite some sites that use a different look, so the, the WW OpenSUSE org site was updated, but not other bits of the infrastructure. So if you are good in CSS and that kind of stuff, feel free to jump in and make our infrastructure con consistent. Also we have uh, quite some promotional material for our releases and they need constant updating, like flyers and that kind of stuff, if you want to like to work on that one, join there. Another area is documentation. So most of our stuff is in the wiki. I mean, it's a wiki, so you don't need to ask anyone for permissions. If you don't like the way Leap42 is documented, just go ahead and fix it really easy. Also, the release notes. If we have some annoying bugs that we want to communicate to users, we can mention them in the release notes. They are nowadays maintained on GitHub, so it's just a pull request away. If you want something that people don't run, want to run at the same mistake you made, just file a pull request for the release notes. Then another point is infrastructure. We run quite a few systems and sites that anyone could get access to who has a clue, like the, the WW OpenSUSE org, or the, the site that hosts the release notes, has some ugly scripts, so if you want to take care of that kind of stuff, the, you can help there. Also, the software OpenSUSE org uh, discussion came up recently, and Anchor actually has a workshop tomorrow about that one. It needs a revamp, and people that can contribute there, influence how it looks, how it works in the future, and even run the website if they want to. And I need some person's contact to update the download site regularly with the current alpha version or beta version or whatever. Then a big piece where you can contribute is marketing. That is right now not in the hot phase yet, but the closer we get to the release, the more important it is to build up some excitement. Even though Alberto showed that it has not that much of an impact, unfortunately. Nevertheless, we should make some noise about our releases. In the previous releases, we used a marketing plan that mostly focused on new features. But Leap is not really about new features, it's about being stable. So we have to think about how to advertise Leap in the future. 42.2 will have many new exciting features due to SP2, but 42.3 most likely will be more boring. So we need a different marketing message there. Volunteers are more than welcome to join there and help getting a new marketing plan, work on the messages we send, participate in the social media, that kind of stuff can be done in marketing. 
Then if you're a packager, of course, take care of your packages, submit them to Leap if it makes sense to update them, but you can also help to decide to not update packages. Like I said before, there's a bot who checks submissions from factory, and some help is useful there to decide which packages to accept and for which one to say, sorry, no, this is too experimental for Leap. Of course, you can also help other people to fix their packages they don't build for the new Leap anymore. In the Alpha 2 announcement, you could read, for example, that several of the changes like glibc or CMake broke other packages, and I'm quite sure no one will be mad at you if you help fix the build breakages there. So just go ahead, look at the build failures, and jump in. QA, Leap is meant to be stable, so that requires work, that requires testing. So we need QA. Please go ahead and install the, the milestones we release. Help with the testing plan, so people know what to test. Someone needs to think what, what feature to test, like for example with Alpha 2, there's no KDE update yet, so it doesn't make sense to test KDE yet and the testing should focus more on GNOME. Would be nice to have someone who can come up with a plan and tell people what to test and help there, especially on physical machines, because OpenQA covers the, the boring QMO part already. Also in the area of QA would be to take a look at the bug reports that come in, make sure that they are assigned to the right people, that we have good bug reports, that people add log files and all that kind of stuff so developers can fix them. Then another area is release engineering. So this is right now Max, Dominic, and me mostly. Looking at staging projects, make sure that, that we pull all required packages to, to rebuild them, look at the build failures, check the logs, what's the reason, file bugs, look at the OpenQA result, decide whether a breakage is intended and OpenQA needs to be adjusted or whether it's actually a bug. And the systems are all public, so anyone can look at that. If you enjoy digging into strange problems related to i686 glibcs that break S-rays, feel free to help us there. You can monitor the OpenSUSE factory IRC channel, where we usually discuss such changes. Last but not least, translations. Alberto mentioned in his statistics that we are quite good in countries that don't speak English as primary language. So translations is still important to us. And we are right now in the process of moving most of the translation technology to WebLate. There was a talk by Stanislav, I think, an hour before, if you missed it. Uh, go ahead and watch the video. WebLate is now a, a web interface to make translations really easy. Nevertheless, we need people that can drive other people, language coordinators. So if there's no one taking care of the language you speak, go ahead and grab leadership there. Make sure your language is complete. Also, part of the job would be to make sure the translations in the wiki and in the software are consistent. So the wiki doesn't use the same mechanism as most software, but translates directly in the wiki. So th those are sometimes distinct communities and we need to synchronize them. Also, translations is not just about typing strings, but we also need tools that can extract translations, for example, from the website, and to merge them back when the web play translation comes. So if you're a programmer and, and like to work in that area, you can help us with the tooling. Also, someone needs to make sure that the translation packages are submitted in time, like the slideshow, if there are new translations, made, someone needs to update the translations package. Help is welcome there as well. So most of the tasks are tracked in progress, at least those that are really, really crucial, crucial for the release. You can sign up there and then you can get tasks assigned by me, for example. Or you act as coordinator and distribute the tasks yourself. Yeah, so much for the what can you do. And I also have a few loose ends, a few questions to the audience. One of the questions is, what's a first-class desktop? 
So we have in the installer the option to install GNOME, KDE, XFCE, LXDE, some minimal X, the text mode installation. Why is that there? And why are other desktops not there? What are the rules for that? What, what qualifies to be listed there in the installer? Should we add more? Or maybe should we throw out some entries to make the, the installation easier? What are the conditions? For example, translations. Is it, does a desktop need a translation to Spanish, for example? If it doesn't have the translation, should we remove it from the installer? That's a question that, that's not answered yet. It's just the way it is since years. We never changed that. And what qualifies for the default desktop? I know that's a controversial question. We have KDE as default desktop, but in 42.2, uh, in 42.1, sorry, it was probably not the, the best um, showcase for our stable distribution. So it required a few online updates to be really stable. And how could we prevent that in the future? What are objective measurements for the default tester without all the flame wars? I always make the joke, I personally hate them both, so I like neither KDE nor GNOME, but we ha have to have something that our users, our target audience, considers good. Whatever it is, whatever technology it uses, if it crashes, that's not, not a good advertisement for our distribution. So feel free to discuss this afterwards or on the mailing list. Maybe we can come up with some objective measurements or hints that could guide us with this question. Another issue is, um, can we drop packages? I know some people were already active and filed several drop requests for packages that are old upstream or no longer maintained, but they are in 42.1. And if a user uses exactly this old news reader, and we say we have painless updates, upgrade to 42.2, and suddenly that newsreader is gone. Will that user be happy? Maybe we should postpone such drop requests to the next major version. I don't know. Then, as I already mentioned, the two-text mechanism for, for Leap. Right now we release milestones manually and then don't update the, the repo until the next milestone. Maybe it's worth to think about using something similar to Tumbleweed and automatically update the packages in the download repo. Last but not least, auto submit from factory, question mark. So for some packages it may actually make sense to have the bot also submit from factory if there are version updates, but not for all of them. So we need some tagging mechanism, somehow mark them, somehow tell the bot that some packages are safe. But I have no answer to that yet. So suggestion or pull requests, welcome. So those were my questions. Now time for yours. First of all, sorry for the bad experience you had with Plasma. <laughs> um, that was also unexpected to us because up to the point that OpenSUSE Leap was released, we had pretty good feedback on Plasma 5. So what surprises me there is why wasn't it caught during the better releases and why didn't you go back to shipping KDE 4, which was an LTS um, release at that time? That's a good question. Was there a point in time where we could have seen that? I don't could know. Um, there are things which you could have seen, probably, or at least if your users would have tried it. I've heard from OpenSUSE, for example, um, that you had big problems because users expected um, session management to work. And that was something which we actually knew that it worked, but nobody of our users and the other distributions cared about it. <laughs> so something with the OpenSUSE users was different, that they cared about this feature being missing. And that's something which could have been possible to catch during the beta releases. Yeah, so maybe it's, it's a good hint for, for the beta test plan to emphasize 
such features more and get feedback on the really important things of the desktop to see how, how bad it went or how good it is. Yeah. A question for you with the saying that KDE4 was LTS. Our maintenance perspective was that it wouldn't, well, is it still supported now? I guess is the question. And that's the point. You know, Leap 42.1 is live now, so we couldn't use KDE4 because it wouldn't last a year. And that's why we had to use 5. But that's not really a point, because I'm not sure what are you shipping right now, 5.5? Five, five? I have no idea. It was updated two times via maintenance updates, I think. Uh, okay, so you uh, shipped stable releases. But 5.5 um, five, five is already out of life as well. And so, yeah, it's, it's not really a big difference. <laughs> so basically what we are doing is updating to the latest upstream version. So when there is 5.6, it goes to 5.6. Usually not 5.6.0, but 5.6.1, 5.6.2, and so on. So it started with the oldest possible we had on the leap and slowly got upgraded together with the QT to incorporate all the bug fixes. But it was really not that stable. But, and I think that's one of the open questions from Ludwig is like, is that a sensible model for our, dis default, dis our default desktop in a distro like Leap? Like, do we really want to be having that risk of always moving KDE upstream? I, that's fine, that's what we have to do to maintain KDE, but then should KDE be the default in Leap? And I don't have an answer for that, I have an opinion, but it's kind of balancing that whole you know, accepting the realities of what the upstream is doing with the expectations of what our Leap users are going to have. So, any other questions? Uh, but, uh, uh, but to answer the question about why the beta test did not cover this, uh, Plasma 5 was in Tumbleweed for four months or so at that point, and people uh, with some specific graphic drivers had some problems, but most of them were fine, including myself. I had Plasma 5 running when we integrated into Leap. Um, but then suddenly when we released Leap, uh, I don't know why, but the journalists or the bloggers or whatever created a completely different picture of it. And most likely because they all shared the same underlying hardware, I don't know. But um, this is a typical problem we have with every distribution, even our SLE, um, that the beta tests don't cover everything. Because the real scenarios that are really important, you only find out once it's important. So that's why. Well, one reason for this could be that a lot of the tests, especially the uh, QA tests, are done on VMs. And uh, the other thing, the, 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 the real reasons use it on real hardware, so. Um, not necessarily a question, but an answer to one of your loose ends. Um, the default desktop, I know it's a difficult uh, topic, but how about letting the users decide, uh, I mean, users basically vote by what they install. We already have statistics about what packages get downloaded most often from the mirrors. So we should be able to have uh, statistics if more people are running GNOME or KDE or whatnot and just make that d the default in the next cycle. But it, I mean, it would surprise me if we had more GNOME users if KDE is the default. I mean, I would expect that the default desktop is used more unless our user base fundamentally changes. <laughs> I don't think so. I think Richard has named some numbers earlier, but on the mailing list somewhere, but... Yes. 
So the all number digging I came up with is that most people stick to defaults. So that's why it's so tricky to change defaults based on downloads. Because you, you, what, you, what we know is that, that more GNOME users moved over time. But for example, the downloads of the live DVD, which is really a decision a user does when, it co when he comes to the new OpenSUSE version, they don't grab the DVD and then say, oh, it's, DV it's GNOME or it's KDE, but they really say on software OpenUserOrg, I want the GNOME Live or I want the KDE Live. The KDE Live was dominating this by, by large. So I think OpenSUSE users as now are KDE users, but that's because we have had it for def as a default for, for quite a while. So this kind of created a loop that is hard to break by saying it crashed once, so change it now. So I don't know. I'm, I personally dislike the idea of having no default because having no default means I don't know what to do and this is Linux from scratch. And I can just say, here is Linux, it's upstream, I don't know. The, the, the task of the distribution should be to pick defaults. And if we can't find a good measure on why changing, I personally would stick to it. I mean, KDE. People that know what GNOME is will choose GNOME, and all the others will have to provide a stable. I, I agree with Ludwig completely. KDE has to be stable, otherwise KDE should be dropped from Leap. But as long as it's stable enough to be in Leap, it can be the default. That's my personal opinion, but I'm, it's no longer my call. Just a remark from my side, um, Zuse is a long-term supporter of KDE and I really never understood why Leap and SLE, which have the same basis, have a different uh, default desktop. So it's quite strange if you look from the outside on it. That would have been an argument for choosing GNOME as a default for Leap, but we didn't. SLE 12 does not have KDE. So, yeah. Does anybody have any other questions? Oh. Yes, yeah, so this is a completely different question. <laughs> Less controversial, too. Uh, so, uh, in the... Uh, Leap 42.1, we had Hawk and Hawk 2 as separate packages. And as of SP2, I've removed Hawk from, from SLE. Uh, and same thing in Tumbleweed, Hawk is gone. So there's only Hawk 2. Uh, so is that automatic in 42.2, or should I create a drop request, or what's the procedure for removing something? Yes, you need to file a drop request. So 42.2 is a copy of 42.1, so it inherits all packages and they stay there, unless you do something. Um, one of the things that I was surprised by this, this talk is that um, some package that has been uh, taken from factory and then at the time, 41 is not updated. So I think there are many people, including me, miss that they are missing updates of the 42. So I somehow expected that it follows automatically to the factory. And yeah, you listed in last slide that how we manage that. So from my, my opinion that we need some white list that this package is supposed to be stable, so it's safe to follow the tumble witch and so on, at least at, um, until code freeze. Yeah, so yeah, it was a surprise to some, that's why I explicitly mentioned it. It has to be submitted manually because we cannot know for all packages what happens there, and I mean, there are thousands of packages, but yeah, a solution that could somehow tag the safe ones would be nice. Thank you, Bernard. Um, 
What we did for 42.1 was because not all maintainers were actually liking to have their packages, that had factory packages in Leap, was creating auto-submits with reviews. And for some, I overruled in one or the other direction. And I, I think, as I watched your talk, at least we have to add some reminders, because I know I submitted tons of, in Berna too, uh, tons of Perl packages to Leap 42.1, but I did not yet think about updating those, and I don't have a list, and I don't even know how to create this list myself. So having some kind of reminder, or even directly a request that I have to acknowledge or decline to judge, as you say, uh, would be a fair measurement to answer your question. Yeah, it could, could be an option. But quite of them will be rejected then by someone because it's unsafe. Right. Yeah. Yes, but that's part of the process then. But right now I think we're creating tons of security problems by having stale versions there. So it's no longer stable, but it's actually outdated. Well, if it's a security issue, then hopefully we get a maintenance update in, or a security update in 42.1, and that way you get the submission automatically also in 42.2. So yeah, but you don't, okay. I, I don't... I don't think it's fair to put everything on the burden of the maintenance team there. I have quite enough to do. So um, I'm having an idea which might not be feasible because I don't have enough experience with this process, but following up what uh, we heard in before, how about some kind of automatic reminder or some automatic process for submission or also a drop request if nothing happens then at least as an automatic request for dropping packages and then someone has to actively make the decision. I mean this could be a long-term plan like for 43.0 again. But what which, which package do you want to drop? I mean, Like the ones that are not updated and then to prevent any kind of uh, running into stale packages, which are not reasonably... Yeah, um, yeah but for, for, I, th I think for most packages, if they're just old or abandoned upstream, there's no harm done. If it builds, leave it there. So what? For how long? As long as it's built. I mean, I don't care if it's green. I don't, it's not on my radar. <laughs> So, no more questions, then thank you for your patience.